Today's Friday, January 17th, 2025. However, yesterday, which was January 16th, roughly 21 minutes after the market opened, I took a look at the weekly expiration, which is today's expirations, gamma exposure on the SPX. And that's what we're taking a look at right here. I noticed that there was a large amount of positive gamma around the 6,000 strike. This is pretty obvious to see as it is very large in comparison to all the other strikes on the chart. And that's caught my interest, which ultimately led me to share that information with the Quant Trading App Discord. And that then led me to open up this trade right here. I'm currently still in one lot of this position, which I will be closing out as soon as I'm done recording this YouTube video. You guys can see how much the trade is up. This is my risk profile on Thinkorswim with the same position, as you guys can see right here. Thinkorswim is my platform of choice, at least when it comes to trading on margin. You guys can see here, one lot, this is the PL. The position expires today, January 17th. This is a candlestick chart of the SPX. These are 15 minute candlesticks right here. The trade was open roughly around here yesterday. And as we can see, the market is pinning right around 6,000. I think it's easier to understand the spread on a platform like OptionStrat. This is a call diagonal spread. However, the video is not specifically about this type of strategy. I just figured I'd share how I chose to make a profit off of understanding the data in which I was looking at. What was important to take note of is the fact that it's also a large monthly options expiration. Today is a Friday and it is a monthly expiration for the S&P 500 and price does like to get pinned. So it would be worth a lotto. I wouldn't risk too much on it given the previous context. I always like to take a look at what could go wrong or what is an opposite argument for the trade in which I'm looking to take. Usually if I'm in the right state of mind, I'll have this type of approach. If I'm rushing to get in a trade, sometimes I won't look for the counter argument, but this is it right here. So yesterday, early in the morning, tomorrow is a large MOPEX. I wouldn't have a strong conviction in price action holding strong in either direction for the balance of the week. The ES is at the 50 day moving average. So this is the ES that we're looking at right here. And it is at a trend line resistance. Keep this on watch for a breakout and hold above possibly next week. Otherwise, back down to 5,900 and then 58 would be expected. So this is it right here on a larger time frame. So I was already aware of this is the 50 day moving average. We were getting a rejection early in the morning and this is a clear and obvious trend line. However, this is not enough of a reason for me not to take a trade targeting the upside. And then I start hunting for additional clues. And that's what led me to also take a look at the gamma exposure. Something to also take note of is the fact that the SPY's gamma exposure, again, this is all around the same time here. So this is 15 minutes after the market opened yesterday. I noticed that the 600 strike on the SPY, 15 minutes after the market opened, also stood out like a sore thumb. It was the absolute gamma strike. It was the highest positive gamma strike and it dwarfed any other strike on the chart. This was enough to lead me to want to speculate in a trade targeting this upside here. 600 on the SPY is roughly 6,020 on the SPX. So when I decided to structure my call diagonal, I wanted to target a little bit past 6,000 as if the SPY was to go to 600, it means the SPX SPX would have gone a little bit higher than 6,000. And as we can see, the SPX is currently hovering right around this area here. So this resulted in an excellent trade. The SPX did go a little bit higher. As we can see, it hit a high around 6,000. And 15 or so around 6014 as we can see right here the exact high was 6014 and 96 cents but ultimately it's pinning around the highest gamma strike right here of 6000 the previous couple days almost the exact same thing happened and it has resulted in some simple beautiful pinning trades here as the market was stuck around 950 for a couple days and then today it's closing around 6000 here are a couple examples. This is on the 15th. So on Wednesday of this week, we had a nice pin trade right here at 950. So that's the same thing which I'm pointing out to you guys in which I decided to trade a zero DTE iron butterfly and I let it expire as the market ended up pinning right where we were expecting, which if I remember correctly, ended up cash settling for $900. This trade used a little over $500 to open this trade. 
then we have the swing trade that was opened again targeting this strike price up here for today's expiration and then yesterday ran a zero dte iron condor again targeting almost the same thing noticing that there was a lot of gamma around 950 in this case here i used a couple extra tools in which i have developed for quant trading app this is referred to as the power strike whenever the power strike lines up with the absolute gamma strike and it's also a strike that has a lot of positive gamma and we're in a net positive gamma environment price does like to pin around these strikes that information in itself has led to some very powerful trades so say for example here this is the spx data channel within the quant trading app discord by the way link is in the description to any of this in which i'm talking about if you want to learn a little bit more about quant trading app this is yesterday's data feed here as we can see this is the gamma profile that is printed out every few minutes the spx trade engine actually generates trades and it sends out when it thinks it is a good time to open the trade as well as close the trade i have some more videos that will be coming out on this later this year in which it will showcase some of the results on this algorithm in which i developed last year but most of this has been in the developments for the past three years with the ultimate goal of making trading to be as simple as possible mostly for myself but i'm sharing this with anyone interested within quant trading app Outside of trading, my time is split across multiple different ventures. So when it comes to making decisions, when it comes to trading, I like it to be as quick and as time effective as possible. That means in a case like this, if I pop on here and I take a look at this data and I see that the power strike is lining up with the absolute gamma strike and price action is choppy, I'm then going to take a look at the greater context. Is there a catalyst coming up later in the day, like an FOMC announcement? If there's no FOMC announcement, there's no major, major catalyst for the rest of the day. Maybe it's a day one or a day two consolidation, then we're not expecting the markets to go much further because it's not a breakout trade. Then I'm going to to expect price to be pretty choppy i might run a zero dte afternoon iron condor or some sort of zero dte iron butterfly and from a lot of my results what i've been analyzing based on all of the trades in which the quant trading app traded engine has taken over the past few quarters i've seen that it's actually beneficial to just let these trades expire and that has led me to realize that i no longer need to have a large margin margin account to trade as this for example on wednesday here's the afternoon power strike which is also lining up with the absolute gamma strike which is is also lining up with the power strike if i were to click this right here it's going to show us this snapshot at 1 45 p.m eastern time on wednesday this is what i'm talking about right here we see multiple things lining up this is the highest positive gamma strike this is the power strike and it's also the absolute gamma strike all of this lining up led me to run an afternoon iron butterfly and because these trades are being opened in the afternoon it means expiration is only three less than four hours away so it's not that long of a hold this is the gamma profile right here we can see it is a high positive gamma strike we are in a net positive gamma environment that's why we see all of this green there's no red on the charts whenever we are in a net negative gamma environment we'll see red on the charts as that is the way quant trading apps gex profile was developed we can go back into previous days and actually take a look and see what happened with price action around these gamma levels that's how i got good at this it was by building this tool then going back into previous days and previous months and actually analyzing what happened with price action which we can see right here, but then also seeing what happened with the gamma exposure throughout the day. In cases like this, it's fairly simple as it's the only massive gamma strike on the charts, which is not a surprise. We're looking at the gamma profile from yesterday as the market opened, and this is where the market is here today. It's not a surprise. I'll take a screenshot of this, save it in my notes, and then the next time I see this, I'll likely run another trade, something like this, which means if the market did crash and all of this didn't, matter it would have been a max net loss of 110 dollars per how many or however amount of lots in which i ran of this by the way guys robin hood allows you guys to trade spx options now so there's almost no excuse regardless of how small your account is even with a two thousand dollar robin hood account these types of trades are possible obviously with a smaller account you need to be a little bit more diligent with your risk management it means don't throw your whole account into something like this but even if you're on a ten thousand dollar account on robin hood you take a trade like this an eight hundred dollar return is an eight percent return on a 
on an account like this. The trade in which I had a couple days ago, just utilizing the gamma exposure and some of Quant Trading App's tools, resulted in a $900 win. That's a 9% return. You're talking about a $10,000 account growing well over 15, 16% within one week. It won't always be that way, but if there's a bad week in which the account takes a three or 4% hit, that's not that bad if it's growing well over 10% on good weeks. That's a great ratio. And I know for people with smaller accounts, you're looking for more aggressive returns. This type of information I think is pivotal for helping to grow smaller accounts. I'm pretty sure if you have a large account, you're more advanced and you know of other different types of strategies out there. Just buying a call would have been a little bit too risky in my opinion. So that's why I decided to run this call diagonal, which had very limited risk to the downside. Now, exactly when or where did I enter the trade? I used other tools for that. That's where things can get a little bit more nuanced. We're obviously always trying to utilize entries wherever it's the least amount of risk as possible. So we have other tools within Quant Trading App. This was the SPX at the intraday zone here yesterday, and it was hitting right into the zone. We can also see this zone from the previous day here in which price consolidated. It, it broke out of the previous day's high, continues to go higher. So in other words, from this consolidation phase right here, market broke out. This is the first retracement we saw in indecisive candle happened right within the zone. That's just utilizing price action, but it led me to you see this as a good entry to take the trade as I know the risk was really slow if I decided that I wanted to stop out of the trade if I was taking a future scalp. In this case, yeah, the market bounced straight from here and it went to yesterday's high. That was a separate trade, but for the most part, that's where I decided to take my entry. I have parameters for what I like to look for, mostly built around Quant Trading App. Link is in the description down below, guys. If you're interested in any of this, I have a ton of other videos on this YouTube channel. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.